Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Startup Show, brought to you by Inc. Authority. I'm your host, Trevor Rowley. In The Startup Show, we're trying to bring you content to help you as a new business owner to launch, grow, and scale your business. Of course, a lot of the business owners that we talk to are concerned about how to brand themselves, how to make themselves unique and stand out amongst the competition. We have a very special guest with us today, Gary Miranda, who is a business advisor at Inc. Authority, to tell us a little bit about branding. Welcome to the show, Gary. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Trevor. I appreciate it. Good. And so we've had you on the show before, and you've talked a little bit about what you do as a business advisor. But for those who may have not caught you on a previous episode, what is it that you do as a business advisor? So as a business advisor, uh, once you become a client with Inc. Authority, I facilitate some of the well, state registration documents, getting you your EIN number, laying the groundwork for the bank account, and just making sure that as a, as a foundation, you're set up correctly to, to be able to move on to the next step, which is the fun part of how to actually help you start your business. Yeah. And in this conversation, sometimes I talk about marketing, sometimes we talk about some credit options, but a lot of the times what we talk about is branding and coming up on what the plan is, who we're trying to reach out to, who our clients are, how do they shop, where do they shop, at what time, and be able to put a plan together to be able to let them know we're here to help. That's right. You know, And it's really one of the big differences between Inc. Authority and maybe other business formation companies is there's a lot of companies out there that are happy to take somebody's money and maybe prepare a document to create an LLC and send it to them. But there aren't very many organizations, if any, other than Inc. Authority, who assign a seasoned business professional who's been there and done that to hold a client's hand, particularly somebody who's doing this for the first time, and walk them through the path of not just launching, but growing and scaling their business and answering their questions and helping them have some of that confidence that it's going to take so that their business can succeed. So we're happy to have you on our team. So let's talk about this idea of branding for a minute. So first of all, what does it mean? When we talk about, hey, we've got a brand new business and we want to brand our business, what are we really saying? The biggest thing that it does for you is it creates a feeling. Um, there's a, a reason, there's a, 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 an opportunity to where we're finding a solution for our clients. Um, branding is very powerful. Uh, I can tell you when I'm driving down the highway, my son sees a Starbucks logo, all of a sudden he's thirsty. So it creates a, it's a feeling that it creates. Um, every business has a different way of branding or a different purpose for their branding. Um, but it's very important to figure that part out because you're going to build your business. Yeah. You know, there's a, an emotional connection that we can create between our business and the audience that we're trying to reach, right? And our branding messages, the way we align ourselves, the way we portray ourselves to the public goes a long ways to how they feel and how they connect with us and if they want to do business with us. And it shows us, it helps us stand out amongst the crowd, right? And so branding becomes essentially, particularly for a brand new business, who is saying, hey, here I am, I've got this business, I've got this great product, I've got this great service, I need everybody to know about it. And they want to have that connection with their customer and their customer base. So what are the, some of the ways that, if I'm a brand new business owner, what are some of the ways that I might go about starting to brand my business? What are the things that I might intentionally do to, to brand my business? One of the first things, uh, most popular things, is to figure out a logo, uh, something that represents um, maybe your mission statement, maybe your purpose, maybe uh, something catchy, something that you're going to be able to put out there to where you can start building a model around and really be able to capture the right audience. Because that's another part of branding is, again, going back to who is the who is my targeted audience and how can I relate to them and, and let them know that we're here to either help them or here's a product or service that we, we've put together. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of different types of logos for different companies, and I think they the, pre, the people who put those logos together have tried to connect with their audience in different ways. You know, there's some where there's a visual that's so strong and powerful that you can instantly, just by looking at the, at the visual, you know exactly what they are trying to do, right? Yeah. You might see a logo that has, you know, a, a lawnmower in it or something. You know, it's a lawn maintenance company, right? There's a lawnmower <laughs> yeah. there, right? Together with exactly. the name of the company. Um, some others might have some sort of vision. Maybe they're a nonprofit company or they have, um, you know, some way that they uh, give back to the community or something and they incorporate elements of that back into their logo. It's not always just the name, and sometimes a logo doesn't even have the company name in. Uh, can you give us some examples of like some of the most famous logos that are out there? Yeah, uh, I say that all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to be an image. It could be the, the word. I think like one of the more popular ones, like Costco. Costco is just that logo, but you see it anywhere and you recognize it right away. Um, sometimes it's uh, it could be a tagline or like a 
uh, something that describes what they do for business under it. There's the good thing is there's no rules. It's whatever you want it to be. And it's whatever the message is that you're trying to communicate to yeah. your clients. Yeah. And then, yeah, not only are they, well, some that are just words, there's some that are, you know, images, yeah. right. That don't even have the company name. Like, you know, you think of the famous Nike swoosh, right? I mean, everybody knows oh, that. Hello, yeah. yeah. You see that you, you think of, you know, the apple with the bite out of it, right? I mean, everybody knows what it is, right? Yeah. You, you don't have to give the name. And so, it's incredible how you can really send a message to your audience with, with that logo. So again, I'm a brand new business owner. I've just started my business. I'm talking to you as my business advisor. I'm concerned about getting my company out into the public eye. Uh, maybe I'm creating a website and I, I want to have something or, uh, on it uh, that shows who I am, or maybe it's an image I'm looking for on my business cards. Sure. You know, what's the process like? How do I get a logo set up and what does that look like? Well, there's uh, there's a fork in the road here. There, we have to decide of is it just a general logo, like just something like like you said, a lawnmower. That's a perfect example. Like we're not really um, we we don't have to protect the lawnmower because a lawnmower is a common thing uh, for some clients. They are creators. They are creating their own uh, t-shirt company. Maybe their own. Uh, it could be like computer program where the logo is everything. It means everything. And that's when we take it to the next level where we start discussing trademarks. And a trademark, just to sort of summarize, gives you the ability to make that logo, make the name, make the slogan if you have one, which is part of your branding and the description of what you're doing and making it yours and yours only. Just yeah. like you and I can't start a company called Nike or Starbucks, right? Um, being able to trademark your name and become that brand, not just a brand, but the brand for that particular logo or, or phrase or name. That's the biggest. So if you come up with this really cool logo, right, that you just look at, it, it's like, this tells the story of my company. Everybody knows who I am by this logo. That becomes intellectual property that you own, right? Yeah. And that's where this trademark comes into play. You want to protect that intellectual property and prevent other people from copying, stealing, taking that logo and using it for their business. And so I think oftentimes logos and trademarks go hand in hand, right? Because once you create that trademark and put it into use, you want to prevent other people from putting it into use. Now, the process of actually establishing the trademark, I know there's a lot of companies out there that say that they can help people with trademarks, yep. you know, some for free and some for a fee, but is it difficult? Should people try to do it on their own? Should they use one of these sites that they can find on the internet to get a logo done? What's the process look like? Well, when it comes to creating a logo, you have a couple of different options. There is like template logos where you can go on a website where they have stock images and you can change the colors, maybe add a font to it, uh, combine two images to make one of your own. Um, that's a really good way, but it's a stock image, meaning that you might see your logo in many different formats and many different places. Now to make more of a custom logo, that's what we do here at Ink Authority. And the custom logo is actually to sit down with the graphic designer to discuss your message, your purpose, what you exactly see your vision to be and designing a logo from that reverse engineering a logo from what your goal is with your company. Um, we facilitate that entire process for you. We go through a revision process as we start taking it from an idea and turning it into an actual image that you can see. But from there, going through the different adjustments until you see them right, that perfect logo that you just know is the one that's yeah. Um, once we do that, we provide it in the different vectors, meaning that you're going to use it. Let's say use it for your Instagram. Well, that's a different format than TikTok, right? So you want to own it in all those different formats. We even create the digital business card so that way you can go and just print it. Um, and you own this. This isn't something that we build and we hang on to. This is something that the moment we sign it over to you, it be becomes your logo. And that's a big deal because a lot of places you'll get a logo and then you want to use it in a different format. Let's say you want to use a different company to print it and like, oh, you can't do that because it's our logo. So you have to make sure you ask. Yeah. You know, you said that so well because I've, I've seen all of those things happen, right? I've seen situations where somebody found, you know, a website that said they would put together a, a free logo or something like that. And, and usually it's template based and, you know, you put together some logo, but at the end of the day, they're still owning it, right? And now they want to charge you for the use of it once you found the thing that you like. You don't want that. You want to actually own your own logo. I've seen people who haven't had the right vectors, for example, and then they try and use it and it looks terrible. It doesn't look like anything that they imagined it would look like. And so, yeah, I've seen all of those mistakes be made. And so I think it's important that you use somebody, you know, that is a custom designer for the logo so that the result that you get that is going to be put out there and be public facing is exactly what you want. It can be used in all the different formats that you want to be used. Extremely important, 100%. Yeah. 
Well, that's been some great information, Gary. I want to thank you for joining us today. You know, logos are an important part, I think, for a new business owner to, you know, get their brand out there and start that branding process and knowing how to protect that. You mentioned also trademarks is something that somebody should consider when having a trademark. Um, I want to thank all of you for joining us today as well. If you have any other questions, if you'd like to talk to Gary or another one of our business advisors about the process of getting a logo set up by Inc. Authority, give us a call, visit our website. We'd be happy to help you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Startup Show. Please hit the like button with the notification bell turned on so you don't miss any of your content. And we'll see you next time.